Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, you will learn all about direct and indirect or reported speech. We will look at converting the three main types of sentences, statements, questions, and requests, instructions, or advice from direct to indirect speech. There are lots of examples and exercises throughout the video for you to practice and make sure to watch all the way to the end because there is a final quiz to test your understanding. So let's get started. So what do we mean by direct and indirect speech? Well, these are two ways of saying what someone else said in the past. For example, last weekend, some friends and I were planning to go see a movie. But one friend, Ben, couldn't join us. Ben said, I have a dental appointment this evening, meaning he had to go to the dentist so he couldn't come with us. Now here, I'm repeating Ben's words exactly or directly without making any changes. This is called direct speech. But we don't always repeat the other person's words exactly because the words are not important. The message is important. So we can say it like this instead. Ben said that he had a dental appointment that evening. This form is called indirect speech. It's also called reported speech because like a news reporter, we are reporting that other person's words. Now, I want you to notice a couple of differences between the direct and indirect sentences. When we write direct speech, we always put quotation marks around the original words. This is to show that we are repeating the words exactly without any change. But in indirect speech, we don't use quotation marks. The second point is the word that. This is used in indirect speech, but it is never used in direct speech. Now, in informal situations, we can often leave it out in reported speech like this. Ben said he had a dental appointment that evening. Informally, that's okay. But in formal situations, don't leave out that. These are the two basic differences. So now let's talk about how to convert a sentence from direct to indirect speech. There are three steps for doing this. Change the pronouns, backshift the tense, and change the time and place expressions. In the example, you see that the pronoun I in direct speech has become he in the reported sentence. He refers to Ben. This is the first step. Next, the verb has changed from have to had. When Ben spoke, his words were in the present tense. But now when we report those words, we change them to the past tense. This is called backshifting. That is, shifting the tense back to the past. And we also see that this evening, which is a time expression, has become that evening. These are the three main changes that we make when converting a sentence from direct to indirect speech. All right, let's now practice doing these steps with an exercise. We're going to go through 15 sentences. Here's the first one. Sarah said, I drink black coffee every morning. How would you change this to indirect speech? Stop the video and think about it, then play the video again and continue. The indirect speech sentence is, Sarah said that she drank black coffee every morning. I becomes she, that's step number one, change the pronouns. Drink, which is in the present simple tense, becomes drank, past simple. This is the second step, backshift the tense. There are no time or place expressions here, so we don't need step three. Okay, let's move on to sentence number two. Naveen said, I am learning to play the guitar. How would you change this? Stop the video and try it. Naveen said that he was learning to play the guitar. I changes to he. Am learning, present continuous tense, changes to was learning, past continuous. Next sentence. My son is graduating next week, she said with great excitement. We see the reporting clause, she said with great excitement, at the end of the sentence. This is very common. So how would you change this? When we change a sentence to indirect speech, we almost always put that reporting clause at the beginning. She said with great excitement that. The words my son become her son, 
and we backshift the tense. So my son is graduating becomes her son was graduating and next week is a time expression. We can either say the next week or the following week. So she said with great excitement that her son was graduating the next week or the following week. Number four, I quit my job a week ago, he confessed to his wife. Confessed means that he admitted the truth to his wife. So how do we change it? He confessed to his wife that he had quit his job a week before. Notice that in the direct quote, the verb is already in the past simple tense, quit. When we backshift a past simple tense verb, it changes to the past perfect, had quit. And ago changes to before in indirect speech, that's just a rule. Okay, next sentence. Hema didn't come to work yesterday, the manager told me. Try to change it. The answer is, the manager told me that Hema hadn't come to work. Now, didn't come is a past simple tense negative, which changes to hadn't come, past perfect negative. Then we have yesterday, which becomes either the previous day or the day before. Both are correct. So, the manager told me that Hema hadn't come to work the previous day or the day before. Sentence number six is a little challenging. The kid told his parents, I was watching TV and the power went out. How would you change it? The kid told his parents that he had been watching TV and the power had gone out. Was watching is a past continuous verb. It gets backshifted to a past perfect continuous verb, had been watching. And the power went out is past simple. It becomes the power had gone out. Next one. I have seen the movie three times already, I explained. Answer, I explained that I had seen the movie three times already. Have seen becomes had seen. So this means that if you have a present perfect verb, it changes to the past perfect when you backshift it. So what about this sentence? We have been waiting for over two hours, they complained. They complained that they had been waiting for over two hours. Have been waiting is a present perfect continuous verb. It gets backshifted to had been waiting, past perfect continuous. Number nine, I will pick you up at the airport tomorrow, he promised. He promised that he would pick me up at the airport the next or the following day. Here we see that the modal verb will has been changed to its past form, would. And tomorrow has become the next day or the following day. Both mean the same thing. Now, with the verb promise, you can also make the sentence